Randy. How are you? I'm good. We are here for Coffee Talk again on Tuesday morning and wanted to talk, continue our conversation about some ensemble related things with band. Um, and I, I wanted to dive into uh, talking about tuning with younger groups, some techniques that you utilize that might be helpful to uh, younger directors or directors with younger groups or both um, to assist in their efforts to improve tuning in the ensemble. Okay, yeah, happy to talk about that. And um, as you mentioned, you, know, you and I are out and about working with bands all the time and um, we have opportunities to try different things and see what works and what doesn't work, especially when you have to do it quickly and you don't have a lot of time. So I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a couple of things, here, talk about a couple of things that I'm, some people may not agree with. Uh, I'm a big believer right now in technology. I think if we don't use the technology that's available for us, we're really missing the boat. Um, and I think the still the strangest thing I hear, I guess it's not strange. I guess I disagree with it that I hear from directors. It's like, well, you know, I, I I'll use a tuner every once in a while, but I really want kids to do it with their ears. And I get that. And that's our goal, right? I mean, we want them to be able to hear this stuff naturally and make the adjustments. But the problem is, if we use them to, if we ask them to use their ears and listen, they have to know what in tune is. They have to know what it sounds like. They have to know what it feels like, uh, whether it's unison notes, whether it's chords, whatever. And uh, this goes back to something you and I talk about all the time. Before you get too serious into tuning, if your tone quality isn't nice and clear, if your balance from the bottom up isn't good, and if the blend within sections isn't good, if there are individuals sticking out, then immediately you're going to have more tuning problems. Um, so, but I'll tell you something that I do, and I've started doing this. The first time I did it, I felt a little bit foolish, but the more I did it, I thought, whoa, I think this is working. I actually held up the tonal energy tuner with a big smiley face. And sometimes I can put it on a screen if that uh, if that organization has it set up for me. Sometimes they can't do that. But even on my phone, I'll just, I'll hold up and I'll say, okay, principal players, let's play our F concert or a B flat concert. Or uh, if we're getting to play his, getting ready to play his honor march, I'll say, principals, let's have you all play your E flat concert. Um, and I'll just hold the tuner up and I'll ask the band to look at it and I'll kind of go around like this so that everybody can see how it changes, how it goes right into the green, but then it might go a little bit sharp or a little bit flat. And then I'll ask them what they saw and I'll say, what did the principals do? And everyone will say, well, man, it was pretty good. I said, you're right. It was pretty good. But if it goes out of tune, where does it go? And they're like, oh, it only goes sharp. We never saw it go flat. And I'm like, okay. Okay, so there's something to think about. And I ask them, I say, how many of you don't know sometimes if you're flat or sharp? Almost every hand goes up. I say, okay, so what did you just learn from that? Okay, we should probably try to focus the pitch down first and see if that works. I'm like, exactly. I thought, I'm like, you do that, 75% of the time you're going to be right. And you know, if it doesn't work, it'll get worse. You go the other way. So I said, it's, it's really that simple. But then eventually I'll get to the point where... <laughs> Um, especially with younger bands, uh, if it's a middle school band or ninth grade band or even nine and 10, something like that, I'll actually have them play a unison pitch and I'll just go around and show the different sections what the tuner is saying, you know, and, I'll, and my goal will be, let's just, you know, I'll say just for the fun of it, let's see how long we can keep this on green, you know, as a, as a full concert group. And it's amazing as they watch this and they see the tendencies you can see kids start to make the adjustments. They hear the difference and they hold it there and we start to see it on the tuner. So a lot of people will say, well, Richard, that's a little bit of a crutch. You know, they need to be using their ears. But again, I'm going to say, how can they use their ears if they don't know what in tune is? All right. And if you're, and Randy, I know you've done this a, a ton of times too, because we were talking about this the other day. You hold up a tuner to your lead flute player and say, maybe there, maybe he or she's playing a, an E flat above the staff, all right, the higher E flat. And you hold up that tuner and it shows 30 cents sharp. 
you know, and there's always a gasp by that player because they're like, oh, whoa, you know, like they're asking, they're acting like they never do that, you know, and I'm like, uh, guess what? So anyway, then they start to pull that pitch down and you give them, how, if they're not sure how to do it, you know, the first thing they'll do, as you know, is they'll try to adjust their instrument. And I'm like, stop. No, don't do that. Don't touch your instrument. I'm like, what? Focus your air down. Let's see if we can do it with air direction, et cetera. And let's use our ears. And so they can start to pull it down. And then as I go through it with every flute player and they find out that they're all that sharp and then they start to pull it down. Like, again, the whole band will just kind of gasp and go, whoa, did you just hear how that sound changed? I said, it didn't just get better in tune. It sounds better because their pitch level is back to where it should be. So I'm going to encourage people out there to, to bite the bullet a little bit, hold up that tuner in front of the kids. And am I saying doing that for the rest of their lives? No, but I'm saying, especially with beginners, with young kids, use the technology, use the drones. And, and here's the thing about drones though. Kids will hear the drone, they'll play and try to match the drone. Some kids have a really hard time telling if they're with the drone. All right. So that's another reason that I hold up that tuner and I say, are you sharp, flat, whatever? And then they make the adjustment and they see it on the green. And then my whole point to the group is what if we got every trumpet right on the green? What would that sound like? And so then it starts to click in their minds. Okay. So yeah, this does matter. I, my highness, my my lowness of my pitch. Yes, it really matters. And I, I need to know how that works. So I use the technology. Sometimes I use a harmony director, you know, too, uh, to match the drones. And I do that with singing all the time, almost before we play anything, even um, music. Whenever I have time, I'll, I'll play a melody. I'll say flutes, let's, let's hum through that melody or trumpets, let's hum through that melody while I'm playing it on the harmony director. And it's set for the proper tuning. So they're hearing it the way it should be played on their instrument. So that's just, you know, and, and of course, I know you can add a lot to this. There's there's millions of things we can do tuning wise. But if you're trying to get things done quickly, I just think you have to show them whether they're flat or sharp or in tune. I think when they see it visually, then they hear it it all starts to make sense. But I think if you leave out any of those two, the visual or the oral, I think we're missing something, especially with younger kids. So I hope that all made sense. It absolutely did. And, and I guess the, the 10,000 foot view for me is the director's awareness, the student's awareness. Everything that we do should be to heighten that and in some ways, create more problems for ourselves, because if we can't get that kid to lock in, then maybe it is an embouchure issue or an air direction issue, and we've got bigger bigger fish to fry, but that's okay. It's better to do that than it is to ignore it and to pretend like it doesn't exist or to maybe make excuses for why it can't happen, all those things. Um, and so when you start digging into those things, it, it does uncover more problems, as they often say in marching band, the cleaner you get, the dirtier you get. Yeah. Um, it's okay because right. you, you are getting better and, uh, just doing a little bit of that each day, you know, you don't have to take an entire period doing it, but doing a little bit of that each day right. will right. make a big, big difference in the way that your group sound moving forward. And I, might, a, I might add one more quick thing, if you don't mind, Randy. No, go ahead. Um, I do see people having the tonal energy tuner up on a screen, which is great, you know, uh, but then I also see um, a lot of kids that have it on their stands. All right. And directors have to remember, and, and I'm sure they're saying, duh, Richard, we know, but when those are on their stands, that those tuners are picking up everybody, not just them. All right. So at some point, um, you know, that's great for the whole ensemble or if you're trying to get the trumpets to see if they're in tune or whatever. But at some point, you, you got to isolate the individual when you can. And even if you isolate one or two individuals a day, it's it's going to change the way the band sounds eventually within a, a week or two. You know, so um, just be careful, you know, make sure that how you're using your, your tuners is really 
helping to teach your kids how to listen. I guess that's the bottom line. Yep. Great information. Thanks again, Richard, for your time this morning. And uh, we hope all of you out there have a great rest of your week. And thanks for being with us here on Coffee Talk. Yep. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.